Turn it over to our Natural Resource Department Director, Naomi Tilson. Okay, well, they're making their way up here. <laughs> so I'll just go down the line and introduce them. This is Gina Abramson. She's our new forestry specialist. We have Edith Leoso, our tribal historic preservation officer. Shay Schachmeyer, our, I'll introduce her as our wetland specialist. She's also been our water resources specialist. Marketi Mealy, our Brownsfield specialist. Daryl Burns, our invasive species coordinator. Eric Andrews, our climate change coordinator. Nathan Kilgore, Kilgore our air quality specialist. Susie Smith, our GIS specialist. And we have the ladies who are working the registration table in back, Florence Paulus, our administrative assistant, Berthea Ovi, our natural resources outreach coordinator, and Samantha Rosen, our TIPO compliance assistant. So I just want to say thank you guys for all your hard work. I'm going to give the majority of the presentation today, but I have not done the majority of the work, so I wanted to acknowledge them for their hard work putting this together and helping with all this work that has been going on. So miigwech. I do also want to thank the rest of our Natural Resources Department staff that may not be present today, including all our seasonal helpers that have been helping us working on this issue and all the issues we're working on. Does it sound okay? Yep. Okay. Okay, so our outline today, let me turn my mouse back on. <coughs> the presentation I'm going to give today, we're going to give a quick background about line five, and then we're going to talk about some of the areas we're most concerned about and what we've been doing to help protect the Denemy Creek watershed, and then also Mishkazibi, or the Bad River, or what's formerly known as the Medicine River, the true name of the river. We're going to talk about our efforts to protect both land and water on the reservation and within the Bad River watershed. So a quick background about Line 5. Line 5 is just one of the pipelines making up Enbridge's lakehead system. We are just one of the many communities who are concerned about how line is in Line 5 is affecting the environment. The pipeline spans about 1,100 miles. It starts in Superior, Wisconsin, and then it runs through the Bad River Reservation, it runs through the Magna Straits, and it ends up in Sarnia, Ontario. On this route, the pipeline cuts through four of the five Great Lakes Basin. Only the Lake Ontario Basin isn't crossed by Line 5. This map is showing the infrastructure along Line 5 from Superior, Wisconsin to the border of Michigan. Line 5 crosses 27 streams and rivers that flow into Schwankin Bay. As Mike mentioned, in 1953, that's when Enbridge um, received the right of way to build Line 5 on the reservation. And then in January of 2017, the Tribal Council passed a resolution to not renew those expired easements on those parcels that Mike had previously mentioned. And they did this in an effort to protect the water resources both on the reservation and in the watershed and also to protect Lake Superior. Within the Bad River watershed, there's 134 water resources within the Line 5 corridor. And there is an additional 86 that are within 500 feet of that corridor. Most of these water resources are larger wetlands, but there are seven lakes and ponds, and 17 are streams and rivers. And then we're just gonna highlight some of those major waterways. 
So working from our east-west, we have Denby Creek. There's also Sugar Bush Creek, which we'll highlight on a different map. We have Bad River, the White River, Bear Trap Creek. We have the Sloughs, we have Schwamman Bay, and we have Lake Superior. All these water resources are threatened by the operation of Line 5. Although Line 5 does not directly cross Potato River, which is another tributary to the Bad River, it does cross the Potato River watershed on the eastern end of the reservation and just east of the reservation. Sorry, screwed up. Screwed up by clips. And now the black line um, illustrates where line five is running through this area. So now I'm going to talk about the steps that we have taken since the council's resolution in 2017. So the Bad River Natural Resources Department has been involved with many efforts to protect both Navy and a key water and land affected by line five. And we put together a list highlighting some of those efforts. We do monitoring areas of concern through a use of a variety of tools, including drone, aerial imagery assessments, installation of trail cameras. We do a lot of different site visits. We also collect a lot of baseline data throughout the reservation, including our surface water monitoring program and some LIDAR data collection we did. Um, and that LIDAR data gives us some detailed topography information that becomes pretty crucial to evaluate some of these impacts. We also are working with some outside experts, some outside consultants, and we work to help support their efforts. We do that by providing them data, reviewing documents, meeting with them, and assisting in field work and site visits. The Natural Resources Department continues to protect water and land um, when Enbridge is authorized by the Tribal Council to conduct work within the exterior boundaries of the reservation. We do that by reviewing the proposed projects and providing recommendations to the governing body to minimize impacts to our ecosystems. We do that by providing oversight to Enbridge, their employees and their contractors whenever they're conducting work within the reservation boundaries. We issue access permits and we add special conditions to protect the reservation resources and the resources of the watershed. We inspect equipment to prevent the introduction and spread of non-native species. We also make sure since that 2017 council decision making, we always have a natural resources staff me member with an Enbridge employee or their contractor when they have to do work on the reservation. So to allow time for the talking circle, tonight we're going to focus the rest of the presentation on a couple areas that we're most concerned with. I'm going to talk a little bit about where Line 5 crosses a tributary to Denby Creek. You might have heard Mike say Slope 18, and so this is the area that we're going to talk a little bit more about. We're also going to talk about where Line 5 crosses the Bad River itself. And then we'll give you some, let's see, there we go. And then we'll give you some quick information about two of the digs that are being proposed by Enbridge um, for work to occur this summer. So starting with Denby Creek. Denby Creek is designated as an exceptional resource water. It begins near the Birch Hill community and it starts upstream of Line 5. It flows north and passes through the New Odina community, which has the greatest population within the reservation boundaries. Denemy then flows into Honest John Lake and the Bad River Sloughs. The sloughs are outstanding tribal resource water that protects or that supports Minoman and they are connected to Lake Superior. The pipeline crosses Denemy and six of her tributaries. And 
And there's going to be a yellow box that pops up. There we go. So this is the area where Line 5 is crossing Denby Creek and six of her tributaries. And we're going to talk about one of these tributaries located within that yellow box where significant erosion is occurring. So this map is zooming in a little bit closer. And we're going to talk about what's now known as Slope 18, but it's really a bank of one of the tributaries to Denby Creek. Here the installation of the pipeline has changed the hydrology and that arrow is demonstrating how those creeks are actually flowing along the pipeline instead of north the way they should have been originally. So because that line 5 affected the hydrology and increased the flow down that slope that we're going to talk about, that in combination with our beaver friends who have a beaver pond upstream, that increased flow has caused significant erosion that has occurred in this area, and it's starting to occur at an alarming rate. Additionally, this site is located where, near where Enbridge crashed their helicopter on October 29th of 2018, so just this last fall. In Slope 18, this tributary to Denby Creek is along the access route to that helicopter crash site. And we are routinely out there at that crash site because of the remediation that's ongoing and the need to inspect that site routinely. Because we're there, that means we're also routinely looking at what's happening along this bank of Denby Creek. I do want to mention we have a display set up over there about the helicopter crash and the remediation efforts. So if you are interested after the presentation and want to gather more information, please do go over to that display. We will have some staff members there to help answer your questions. I'm going to turn this off real quick. Might just have to go advance, advance the slide. Okay, this slide shows some photographs of that eroding bank. What is the the right bank of the tributary. So these are photographs taken from September of last year through this up just the last couple weeks. These are photographs we have taken, but if you can see, and I know it's sort of hard to see everything that's happening here, but hopefully this illustrates some of that significant erosion that's occurring along that bank. Um, and the tributary runs at the base of the bank. This is one of those sites that Mike just offered. Um, that would be a site that we would be interested in taking folks on a field trip. It is a pretty remote site. We typically walk in there, but you really have to be there in person to see the full effect about what's going on there. This area was scheduled to be brushed this winter by Enbridge's contractors, and the council conditionally approved the anti-degradation decision for this work in November. One condition with this approval was the company needed to brush this area using hand tools in order to minimize those impacts to the water resources because this is a very remote area and it is hard to get equipment back there without causing more damage. However, the company has been resistant to completing this work with that condition. And our department will continue to try to get this area brushed in order to better evaluate what's happening in this area, including better evaluate the depth of cover to the pipeline, because right now we're not sure what it is in this area. Next, we're going to talk about that Bad River Meander. And so that's a reference point on this map. So the true name of the Bad River means Medicine River. The Bad River is outstanding tribal resource water. 
at this location. Line 5 crosses the Bad River around 10 and a half river miles upstream of the Odena community and about 15 and a half river miles upstream of where it flows into Lake Superior. And then I also want to highlight Sugarbush Creek. I think I'm pushing the distance with my wireless mouse. Okay, there we go. So Sugarbush Creek, as you can see, runs within the Line 5 corridor and also runs parallel to it. And next I have this map to show you the location of where Enbridge is hoping to do two digs this summer. So these two proposed digs, which are shown by these blue dots on the map, both on the map at the bottom is a zoomed out map, the map on top is a zoomed in map, and it does include topography data so you can see the steep slopes and ravines in this area. These are two of the five digs that were previously permitted within the Bad River Reservation. A condition of the tribal permitting for these five digs was that work was going to happen during frozen ground conditions to minimize the impact to the water resources. Because this, this route has a lot of water resources crossing it and also has a lot of steep slope, slopes and ravines. However, due to specific concerns regarding pipeline conditions at these two locations, Enbridge is proposing the work is conducting this summer. One dig location is adjacent to Sugarbush Creek and within the Bad River floodplain. We did also create a display about the dig sites and we have more information there about the dig sites. And again, we will have staff over at that table if you want to learn more about these digs. Right now we have two public comment periods open as we're soliciting input from the community and the public to express your concerns you may have with these digs. We review all the comments received and we do take them into consideration through the tribal decision making process. Those public comment periods, um, the deadline ends June 30th. So we do have a box over there or a bucket over there if you want to submit comments tonight. Otherwise, um, feel free to call our department or come into our department to learn more about these digs. And then you have till June 30th to submit comments if you're interested. So now we're going to look back at that Bad River location. And this slide is showing some imagery and some topography that was collected in the spring of 2015. And we labeled not only line 5 on this slide, but we also labeled the other um, pipeline corridors that cross the Bad River. These other pipeline corridors are natural gas um, pipelines. But if you look on the image on the right, that's showing the topography. And you can see um, on the west side of the Bad River, you can see that steep slope. And then if you move further east, you can see the steep slope as you're moving out of the floodplain. And if you look at that topography, you can see how the river has changed over time. You can see how different sections of the channels got abandoned and oxbow lakes were formed. And so it's really interesting to see that movement of the river. And that's a good thing. That's a sign of a healthy, functioning river. So let's talk a little bit about why rivers meander. So healthy functioning rivers meander and change over time naturally. Rivers carry gravel, sand, silt, and water. A river flow speeds up along the outer banks. And when it's speeding up along those outer banks, it's causing erosion to happen. And then with that erosion, those sediments are going into the water. A river slows down along the inner banks, allowing sediments to settle out and deposit. And over time, the sediment build up, and it can block and alter flow paths. The image on the right 
shows a river path named Meander. Sorry, the image on the right shows how a river path may meander over time. And that's what we were seeing in that last slide when we were looking at the topography of Bad River. And I do have the animation if anyone wants to check it out later from YouTube that just sort of animates how rivers do change and meander and form Oxbow Lakes over time. But for time's sake, I'm going to skip showing that to you tonight. And, and instead, we're going to look at a series of aerial photographs. And we're going to look at that stretch where Line 5 is crossing the Bad River. And in this first photograph is from 1939, so this is prior to Line 5 being constructed. So this blue circle is showing you where Line 5 will be constructed, and we'll see that in the next photograph. So the next photograph is from 1953, the year that Line 5 was constructed. So I'd like you, as we continue to look at some aerial photographs, I'd like you to not only look at where Line 5 is crossing the Bad River, but also look at that meander that's to the northeast, that you see in the upper corner of the photos, and look at how that's changing over time. Okay, so we have the 1963 photograph that I seem to quickly pass over, and then the next photograph is from 1975. So you can see that meander located to the northeast is starting to be cut off in the main channel of the Bad River, and that Oxbow Lake is starting to form. Here's the 2005 photo. And then the last photo we have is from 2015. And then I put this little red dot up there. That distance between the upstream river and the location of the Line 5 corridor. And the 2015 photo was roughly about 50 feet. And that's shown by that little red dash. Over the last 25 years, this bank has migrated around 150 feet, or on average, 5 feet per year. This migration is not constant. It doesn't always migrate that much each year. This migration is rather, it's driven by events such as flooding and snowmelt. So we don't know how much it's going to erode in a given year. Since this aerial photograph was taken, we had multiple large storm events, as you guys know. We had the flood in July of 2016 after this photograph. We had the Father's Day flood last year in June. As of November of 2018, the distance between that upstream river bend and the pipeline was measured at only 30 feet. We have been out there this spring looking at this site and there has been a little bit more erosion that has come, so it's just shy of being 30 feet. And again, that's not much distance between the river and the pipeline corridor. And as we're seeing through the other slides and watching how the river changes over time, what is likely going to happen is there's going to be a new river channel that goes across that meander neck. And the existing channel to the west will be cut off and form an Oxbow Lake. And this is at the location where Line 5 is crossing it. This is that rejection of the pipeline that Chairman Wiggins was talking about. At the beginning of November in 2018, Enbridge's contractors installed 12 what they were calling monuments. 
at three locations shown in red on the map. These monuments, which are really brightly colored PVC, these monuments were installed to evaluate bank loss during their aerial patrols and also to help evaluate erosion during on-the-ground surveys. Most of these monuments are about five feet above the ground surface, but there is one that sticks up 10 feet above the ground surface, and it has one foot increments marked off. Um, and again, it's set up that way to hopefully help evaluate bank loss during aerial patrols. In this location, we also, the Bad River Natural Resources Department, we also installed four trail cams out there. Two of those trail cams are set up so we can remotely access the image. This is a pretty remote site to get to. It's not, not an easy site to get to, so we wanted to set up those trail cameras to help us closely monitor this location. There is a threshold where the pipeline has to be shut down based on what is happening at this location. And this data that we're collecting will help us and our expert team evaluate that threshold. This is an image that was collected of that location. I believe this is an image collected by um, tribal member Joe Bates in about mid, mid April. And I know it's a little bit hard to see maybe on the screen, but this is a time where we had higher water flows. And these three circles, this is showing where those monuments are established. And then we have a video that we'll try to get to work. And so this is a video collected by drone showing this location. We're looking to the east right now. And you're going to see that the river is up pretty high. It's about 11,000 CFS when this imagery was collected. And you can see how saturated that meander neck is. You can see the large woody debris pile piling up. And you can see in the background how, how high Sugarbush Creek is from this spring. This map was created based on the data we collected with USGS after the July 2016 flood. So the yellow area of this map is showing where in July of 2016 the Bad River was inundated. And as you can see, the entire Bad River floodplain, including the area where Line 5 crosses, was fully inundated with flood water. Next, we're going to show you a video that our GIS specialist, Susie Smith, created. And as part of this video, Susie did some calculations, um, calculating if there was a high volume oil spill when the Bad River was under high flow conditions, what would the approximate travel times be to the different locations? So we're going to play the video and we're going to zoom into the Bad River. We're going to look at Government Road and Highway 2 and then the mouth of Lake Superior, but you'll notice the different travel times and travel um, and distances will be displayed as part of this video. So line five crosses the Bad River, about 15 and a half river miles upstream of where it flows into Lake Superior. And if you caught those last travel, travel times, 
Again, during a high volume oil spill, when the river is under high flow conditions, the oil would reach the mouth of the Bad River and Lake Superior in about five to nine hours, depending on the exact conditions. So, an oil spill would have devastating impacts, as you all know, devastating impacts on fish, wild rice, and other species. And not just the species in the river, but also the species in Lake Superior and the connected waters. And it was also have devastating impacts on our community. And although oil will act differently than sediment, we can look at this imagery that was um, captured after the July 2016 flood to get a feel for where oil may end up. This image shows the sediment plume on the Bad River a couple days after we received all that rain. And you can see the sediment plume in, entering and dispersing both in Schwamkin Bay, but also into Lake Superior. And again, this image was just a couple days after that rainfall. That sediment plume continued to be distributed throughout Lake Superior.